Can you hear me now? I am so sorry about that, Elizabeth. I did not realize, and thank you for letting me know, I did not realize that the box wasn't on. So that means that Jeannie, at this point, I, I had asked how you were feeling, because I knew you were not feeling too well. That would explain why I haven't seen any <laughs> anything else from you. So thank you for um, coming by, and hello, Miss Wendy. Thank you for dropping in. Um, anyway, I had posted on Instagram and Facebook and such, I think it was like Friday, that I had just finished up my embossing folder organization. And TR, who will be in, I'm sure, at some point tonight, she normally comes by, had recommended that I show you guys what I had finished up. So basically what I've got, if you can see this, this is one bin. And then this one is is my other bin and i've got a total of 81 embossing folders how often do you guys see me actually use embossing folders? this is one of those one of those um supplies that i bought a while back and i bought a ton of them i was finding Doris ones especially on sale at joann's for like two dollars a piece and I think Blitzy was a company online that is no longer in business, but I got a bunch of stuff from them also very, very inexpensively. So I got a lot of things inexpensively all along the way. So what I did is I, I did have my embossing folders already you know, in some folders made from cardstock. And on my video that I shared last month, I cut them down for a couple of them. I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all of them. I didn't get around that finished until this past week. So this is actually, the, this is from just some heavyweight cardstock, and that measures five and a half. I can see there, five and a half by right at seven inches, okay? And then it's got about an inch here. So these panels are right about A2 size, and they fit perfect with these, um, with these embossing folders. And then when I put them all in my bin, they don't use up much shelf space because it's almost about the same size as one of my little shoe boxes here. And I embossed the front of them so that I could make sure that I knew what it was that I was using. And it, I, I love the way that these turned out. When it came to some of my others, and one reason why I've got two bins other than this one's just overflowing, all of the ones in here are too big to be able to fit in one of these little folders. It's like, they won't fit. So I had to do something a little bit different with that. So instead of having them sit vertically like this, I've got them horizontally and I went ahead and did um, the same thing with embossing on the front of some cardstock, and then I added a little tab using a Sizzix die. Um, one thing I did go ahead and do, because some of these are the D, like this one, no longer available. I think someone sent this to me as a gift. This is one from Spellbinders. And you can tell it is very, very intricate, but this will not go through my Gemini Junior normally. So what I wound up doing is after all I was trying out, is this one of the ones I did not know? That's not good. I'm putting a note on some of my embossing folders to see exactly how I can run it through. And I have to admit that this is something that I decided on because of Miss Elizabeth Rogers. But she mentioned that the way that she was avoiding getting too much warping on her embossing plates was, was uh, by using different plates and the different shims. The more pressure, the more warping. My Gemini Jr. gets me warping with just the two the regular plates so I'm trying a little bit different on these guys that are real big and this one is adorable too I don't know if you can see this but this one it's called a noble rook and it's got like a raven or crow on there and this is just oh my god this is the way it looks on the spellbinders package this and something but I love this one and I don't use them I have to start using them more anyway I realized that Using my two Sizzix plates for my Gemini will work for this. I'm not going to recommend that if you've got a Gemini Junior 
think anything other than what they recommend, but it worked for me. The Gemini Junior plates are thinner, just a hair, but they are thinner than the, um, I'm sorry, the Sizzix ones are thinner than the Gemini. Um, this is another one from, this is from one of the 3D embossing folders, Sizzix. It's this one. And for this one, I just need to run it through with my magic mat and the plastic, the plastic shim that came with my. If I try anything else, it will not work, meaning I'd have to go and use my Sizzix machine. But I was impressed. I was able to get it to actually work. Um, one of the other ones that I thought was kind of interesting, and I hadn't really tried it. I think I tried it once and then didn't. I've got this embossing folder. This one is from, from Cuddlebug. It's super, super large. And it does some cutting and embossing. Well, I tried it on a couple of different settings. One of them, see, it's real subtle. I don't see that. Be able to see it. But this, I think, was a really nice, subtle background. It's just got kind of a, a letterpress look of this little, the, num the, the numbers of letters. And this one only used... It used one, Simon, one Sizzix plate and one Gemini plate. And then if I wanted to come through like this and punch out the little holes and be much bolder impression, that's when I'd want to use both Gemini. So basically I'm just saying experiment to see what's going to work for you when you're trying things out in your machine. Just don't go way too much pressure. So that is... My embossing folders and what's neat is these fit perfect on a little shelf that i'm um i my husband and i this past summer built a seven foot tall cabinet with movable shelves and this uses up um, a small amount of space basically the way that my shoe boxes from michael's was pretty boxes idea who is okay get these out of the way oh thank you so much guys i appreciate that um the next part of the storage that i was working on were stickers so i've got this camera too close i'm gonna move it up some jackie desk but at least i'll be able to show you a little bit more of what I'm doing with this, and you'll be able to see it just a little bit. So I've got, these are notebooks. This one, I think, pretty sure I got this one from Target last year. So I've got several of these books, and then I've got some other binders. But what I've noticed is a lot of folks, especially when it comes to their planner stickers, they use kind of like the little binders and such. And I saw a video think in the fall um, from a scrapbooker where she was organizing all of her stickers and her basically her ephemera in binders um, so that she could basically categorize everything. So this is the, the, the small ones I'm going to use for my planner stickers and I have too many of them including some sticker books that have not been. I got these from Target. You see that? It's 2020. This has got all the stuff to basically convert a 19... Oh, uh, a 2019 planner into a 2020 planner, meaning a bunch of these I'm not going to be able to use anymore. And I got two of them, and they're not actually... I think I took out a few stickers out of them. So I've got those. Actually got four binders of planner stickers. These are all little sticker books from Target. So I've got sticker books and a couple of these and then I've got my stickers oh this one is also with all my little post-it notes most of which I don't use but I'm going to start doing that one of the things I've been working on the last few days is my planners and trying to get working with those this one has got a ton of loose ones these I think I got these at Target got a happy planner fitness one because I do have a happy uh, uh, hap a mini happy planner for fitness that I've had for two years and I basically use it for about a week or two and then stop. My my fitness regimen has been usually bicycling or run, riding, 
running or bicycling, and I do most of that over Garmin. And so I haven't really used the planner, all of the things I use it for. I'm busy with that. So I just got it reset up for this month. So hopefully I will use it more than just a couple of weeks. Anyway, I've got this one is this 365 Happy Planner stickers. Here's my loose ones. And then I've got a ton of, these are all ones that I printed out myself. A lot of these, I think I, I either made them or got them as free printables. And this is a set that I think I made. And the, I've, it's where I start and they've, and these are all the ones that I printed myself. So I've got a lot of, of planner stickers. Uh, these you might recognize are from Taylor Made Cards for You last summer sometime. This was included in a, um, a digital kit that she did and I made a bunch of stickers with it. I just think too cool and they're perfect for going on different kind of things um, for special handling or fragile or whatever and then I've got all these cute little unicorns again they were free printables I've got some extra stickers that were sent to me in a swap two years ago um, so I've got some uh, rainbows these are all for tea because I have always been a tea person and not drinking tea too much lately I've been trying to go do more water and I've got my coffee stickers and these are all a free digital download. I'm gonna find out who I got those from. So if any of you guys are coffee lovers, I'm sure that she's still got some. Um, I probably should have written that down before I took them off of the pages. These were all ones that I printed. And this was another set that I printed. And these are actually a couple of stickers that we picked up at a restaurant, which I just thought was cool. So those are my planner stickers. Now, planner stickers, I think that those are, oh, that's not all of them. Sorry. This is also my sticker book that I got from Michael's Recollections, and I love the, the glitter in there. They do still have this type. Don't know that they have any more with the glitter. I think they've changed out the design a bit, but I thought this was so cool. And then when I tried filling it up, it basically got too full because of the way that the stickers I was putting... Um, anything that would fit into these little slots because each page has got two slots and this measure you can basically put stickers in there that are four by six and I was also putting in other things that would fit in the four by six but were dimensional <laughs> you know like those Ling stickers and stuff and that meant that this thing got way too thick and I couldn't really work with so this one's also got planner stickers in there and then I think these were all ones that I picked up at like the Dollar Tree but it's mostly empty now because I took them out and moved them to where they belong in other other binders got another book that's got post-it notes and this is one this is a Happy Planner style that I made the covers and everything and created my own book. Some extra rings. And then I've got... What I did with these, I went ahead and made some dividers in here. And I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but as I was watching videos while I was doing all of this stuff, because being stickers from one page to another, but you know, I've got my 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that I don't really use a whole lot and I've got way too much of that would be perfect for dividers because the pages in here are eight and a half by 11. So that just means that this needs to be nine inches wide, nine by 11 and it works perfect. These are some that I got from, from Dollar Tree. I've got some dimensionals. This is from a Sizzix, I'm sorry, from a Spellbinders um, <coughs> die set that I made an extra around Thanksgiving, got fantasy. Here's some of those dimensionals I was talking about. Stickers from collections, so I've got unicorns. I've got another page of fitness, but these are all dimensional ones that I can't, I just cannot use. I'm gonna have to find some kind of card making ideas for using some of these dimensionals, which is why they are separate from those. I've got coffee, tons of coffee and, and donuts. And I put that all under food and drink as the category because I figure, you know, I'm going to be putting more than just that in as I get up. That was one book. I've got alphas. 
and sentiments. Even these puffy stickers that I haven't used. Got those Christmas ones from last year. Some more Christmas stickers from Recollections. More. Um... Okay, this one I've got backwards. This. Oh, I did two of them. This one is supposed to be. I've got to relabel that. This one's supposed to be Spring and Nature. So I've got my Easter stickers, which Easter's coming up, and butterflies. And then I've got Summer, which is, again, some of those big old thick dimensionals which I don't really like them that much <laughs> coffee and donut shakers that would be cool and then my last book this one's got basically people and animals and critters got love home and family and then got makeup things and then pages and pages of bling and this is not all of my bling. I've got most of the stuff stored elsewhere, but they will be moving into a binder. And all of these fit on one shelf. That's why I love that. They all fit on one shelf. Ugh. Okay. So the next thing I was wanting to go over, which I don't know if you guys are really interested in seeing how I'm storing a bunch of my stuff, but you know, I, I thought I'd share. And if you guys got anything out of it, Great. You know, if it helps you to reorganize some of yours by seeing the, the mess <laughs> that I cleaned up because they were basically everywhere. I had <coughs> I had folders of stickers. I mean, they were just in too many places. And after I got finished, I looked under my desk and I saw that I've got another binder under the think not taking it out yet. I think that is the one that is Halloween stickers. Oh, and I just saw Elizabeth had the same kind of problem. So she organized her stickers a while back and then thought she did a great job until she found a whole other stack. That is kind of the way it works. So the next thing that I wanted to do tonight, and yes, I do plan on getting into some coloring, um, is I want to show off, I want to show off some happy mail. Uh, this first stack of cards is from my the swap that we did over on craft at crafting with debbie and so i am missing a couple of cards on a couple of different swaps that i did but that's just due to the mail i've already checked with it so i'll just include them in next month's but i thought this would be kind of fun kind of do a i don't know a debbie's mailbag or something like that of what you guys sent me so that way i can share your your adorable i mean i every time i get anything swap it is just beautiful so I really appreciate it, and I want to share that with the rest of the world, too. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with this one. I do have everybody's addresses masked off so that not seen. And it looks like, first off, TR made her envelope, which is awesome. I love those. I to make most of my... I can get it open now. I'm with using a knife is I'm always afraid that I'm going to excuse me I'm always afraid <coughs> that I'm going to cut the card she used some heavy cardstock okay Let's see what we got from this TR Oh, she, the reason she used a heavy one is that she sent me another envelope, I mean, another envelope to be able to use it if I <coughs> me. We had our AC redone this past week, and I think they stirred up a little bit of dust that I would like. I've been coughing quite a bit. And she sent me to so sweet. That is, so you make me feel good about myself. I think this one, this is a bookmark. That's not just a, that's a book. And then this one, it's a, what that is called. Anyway. Kind of a gatefold flip card. Where's here signed? 
Thank you much, Miss TR. And then next we have Camille Ernst. This one got mangling the envelope too badly. Stampin' up. Oh, and that. She added some extra cardstock to try to protect it. This has got multiple layers of die cuts. And I love the way that she got those. Love across the front. Got layers on the, you know, got a masking layer and everything. Well, and then the it's pretty gem. <laughs> she said that she made quite a few cards, but couldn't decide, had trouble deciding on um, what she wanted to send to me. That is super sweet. This gem. I have to. See. And then we've got Miss Elizabeth Costa Rogers. And mangling up. Okay, so she has got, and I know that this is um, your logo from from page website and everything. And so I like that little glitter sticker. So you'll have to tell me later where you got that. It's spoiled. She like, but I really like all that foiling. It's like Yupo paper underneath, as I can tell. Miss Elizabeth said that she recognizes the where she does. That is, just... and it's got uh, these. Look, this is washi tape that's also got foil. That is a art too. Thank you so much, Miss. So the other set that I've got is from Foiling Snobs. Starting off with Anna Matias. Okay, so you said that that, I'm thinking you're talking about the sticker. So it's glitter paper with double stick tape on the back. So you print it on glitter paper? Is that right? I have never tried that. The True Two Foiling Snobs Club, it all foils, got a foil butterfly. That's sweet. That is hard to sentiments. You guys probably know that. Okay, I am going, she said that she did print on that, uh, on that glitter paper, so I'm going to have to try that. I have never even thought to try running anything like that through one. Good thing that I've got some more coming in this week. I'm trying not, not to hurt myself and <laughs> I'm trying not to cut myself with a knife. That would be very easy. Oh, and Miss TR is here. Hi, TR. I'm sharing a bunch of the cards that I got during ops. So I will. Just for you, I will go back and show yours again, but um, I also went ahead and shared all of that storage that I finished up, so you don't want to go back. I spent probably about going over all of it. So this card is from Sandra Visker, Great Foiling Snobs, and this is handmade paper. Watercolor. 
that it's got such shine. I'm not sure what Oh my goodness, she sent me some pieces of her handmade paper. That is too nice. She hoped that that she enjoys all the card swaps. Look at this handmade paper. I still have to try that. Um, <clears throat> if you've gone over to... Stopped. Janie the Craft Princess has got some videos that she did this year on... It says that the paper is designed... Appreciate that. So, um, Janie the Craft Princess has got some videos on how she is, has been making paper. Basically, you've got all the scraps. You've got the scraps that are too small to do anything with, so basically, I understand the concept enough to pulp them and put them in paper. But these got some some leaves and such in and they always get such a, a neat texture. It's kind of the same kind of thing as like Yupo, where you never get the same design twice. You're doing it with these the same thing. And I love the way that that part looks. So I will be using those. That the next card I've got is from Lisa Zubak. Similar to the one that TR did. Um, this one is a fun fold card that she put an extra embellishment that overlaps part. Thank you, Miss Lisa. And then I've got from Katina Kenton. Since Wondering if there's going to be any kitties in here because she has a kitty on her. I've got two. Bought a new toy for um for them yesterday and they've been bugging me ever since. Not kitties, but koalas. Those are so cute. <laughs> it is. And she mentioned that it's taking a lot of time for the mail to get stuff to folks. I know I probably do, but what I usually use, what I'm probably not... But I'm not trying to hurry up and, and get things done quicker. Is I just use my, one of my bone folds. I'm trying to do it quicker and not as messy because I'm... You guys, but... Anyway, uh, this is just adorable. And then she also sent me a little happy stamp with a little uh, little guy. I don't know if you can see how tiny that is. <laughs> but that is just too sweet. And again, that one is from Katina Kenton. Okay, so that is my happy mail bag for this month. I am going to try to do that about once a month. You know, basically, <clears throat> you know, save everything up until we get, until I gather everything up. Um, I do have two cards that didn't come in yet. Oh, I will show TR her card again and show her that, yes, I did it. I did. And the little bookmark. That's kind of a fun part. And I think I have, I think I have a die that does that. And I haven't done that kind. Oh, I just realized she also did some embossing on this glitter too. But um, I haven't done a card using a die 
Ellie. I remember right, the last one I did, special card for a birthday for a friend of mine who just loved like her Minnie Mouse, so I all the all the um red and white yeah, red and white dots. Anyway, so the stamp set that I'm gonna use for the stamping and coloring tonight is gonna be this one from Simon Says Stamp. I don't know if you guys saw my post earlier today, which is pretty much late. I should have got earlier. I thought I was gonna be using that one. And I think I did do a couple of cards with this one already. It's just so darn cute. So I've got some accent opaque white paper that I'm going to be using. I think it's the 90 pound cardstock you guys have basically raved about. And I love these little kitties. And the puppy's cute too, but I think I told you I've got kitties. Let's see, what do I want to do? This card. Do hugs and kisses. And I did actually plan on getting the stamping done before getting everything done here, but I kind of ran out of time. Also worked go for up that is coming up in a couple of days. Actually, get higher up. Edges. And this this card is exactly eight and a half. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm gonna just that'll be cute. Put that and this little ruler is just from um Creative Corners. It's a SD tool. And um Janie, this is a DIY sticky grid. It's graph paper that I've got um laminated and sprayed with like pixie spray. I'm actually using a different stencil spray, but that's how I made it. And I did a video on that, I believe last month. And it's to be open. And before I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my hand and bring that down closer so that it's easier for you to see. Zach. I'm at a desk with the drawer pulled out with all my stuff stacked up, so I've got to get those binders out of the way just so I can get to my... Sorry about that. Took me a little bit longer. And where is my... Mento Cito Black. There we go. And this is just a microfiber cloth that I use to make it easier for me to run my hands across it to get a smoother stamping. Probably going to still need to do need to stamp it a second time. What I think I did is I think I may have actually damaged lid on my platform a while back. You can probably see these marks here. That was where there was a uh, a magnet. So I rarely use my magnets anymore. They just do not work well for me. But the stamp platform in general works awesome. That kitty's looking a little bit better. You can see a little more. One more stamping. And Jeannie, this is also one that I've got adhesive on both sides, so I can lift this up and I can get out and put it right back in the same spot, so fine. I'm going to go ahead and stamp a second one. 
Because there's no point in just doing one card. You always need to do two, at least, right, guys? And you guys need to let me know in the chat if you liked, you know, seeing all my organizational stuff, how I got that set up, whether or not you liked seeing the, my happy mailbag, or if you'd rather me just do those as a separate video and just get straight to the stamping. I'm still trying to figure out exactly, you know, what kind of videos I'm going to do and when. So the scheduling whole thing is still up in the air. But the only way I'm going to make it the way that you want to see is if you tell me what you don't. And by the way, if you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that, because if you've been watching this long, I know you like the channel. And if you've got any crafty buddies that you think might like my video too, go ahead and share this over to them. Because I would love, love, love to have some more of them come and hang out. This is social time, guys. I'm going to say that that is good enough. If I need to, I can always restamp it later with some Versafine and then emboss over it. Do. And we know that Tuxedo, Memento Tuxedo Black is good for alcohol markers, so that's one of the reasons I'm it. Experimented with some other inks, and to be honest, I can't tell that any of them really do any better than others. I think I'm going to start off with... Now I have to think colors. I think I'm going to do one of the kitties as being a gray kitty. So I'm getting my, oh, my grays out. This is the GG family and Spectrum Noir. And to start off with, I'm going to kind of do like a little bit of a color block. Basically coloring in some of it to get some ink down on there so everything will get a little bit better. And I'm starting off with a very light one. So this is GG1. You can kind of hardly see it, I think. And because I just want to, I don't have really any detail areas to do with it like this, I'm just using the chisel nib. Go ahead and get that done. Some of this. I'm finding that it does save me a bit of time to do it this way. Parker's also squeaking a little bit, which is just telling me that that one probably needs to be refilled too. And I just got in some refills from crafters. It took 20 days, but they are in the UK, so I'm have to kind of. I that's kind of. So this one is going to be a dark, dark shade. Shadows. sure how many other markers I'm going to use. Basically when I'm coloring I just I basically play around see what it is I decide I like so a little bit at a time. This is another dark one. Is this for the paw here? That is kind of where it would be a little bit of a deeper color anyway because she's in that window. I think that it was a bit too dark out before yeah the G come on in. that works it's a kitty buzz to back in with the GG done and yes I'm I don't know if you guys do the same thing as I do but I always 
move my paper <laughs> more so than I do um, moving my pen because it just makes it easier. I'm one that kind of needs color away from my That part I tried doing too. I don't want to be a little like tabby too much. Fun and cool. Have to use the chisel out out of But I just got it today. Other I think it was yesterday. Are MBs, this was a medium brown. Kitties. Sub kitties. I did some some brown yellows. Also, always make sure you put the right caps on as it kind of sucks when you go to pick them up again later and you got the wrong ones. This tail needs a bring back in two and then just add a lip. TR, that is a very, very good question. Everybody crafting or are they hanging out? Either way, I don't mind because I like having a color. I can't color this guy the way that my cats are done because my cats are jet black. You is just hanging out. I guess one of the good things about when you really don't worry about down too adding as basically yeah. that little guy looks great. for the background on the card that I did earlier like I think it was a couple weeks ago what I did background Gonna try some some purples. Eight. HB 
two. That will probably work out pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the edges with HB3 to make it um, pretty much a, a dark, basically a shadow. Okay, you said that I'm cutting out, and by the way, welcome. Thank you for dropping in. Are you able to hear me a little better now? I was actually really quiet. Bringing this part down just a little bit to give the part a little bit of shape. May or may not turn out. So that was the HP. And I think what I'm going to up, I need to go around the rest of the kitty. Just forgot. That is HB3, and now I'm going to go HB1. I'm going to use the HB1 next because it is so much lighter, and then I can try just blending um, the HB2 where I need it. And since I'm covering so much of the area, I'm actually going to use the This is a combo that I don't really use, um, so this is kind of experimentation time. It is like the color so far Part I put together or not. Right now, this is looking kind of pinkish purple, which is fine, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. And that's one of the things I'm I'm learning more about. I mean, when it comes to adding shadows, that's I think that is pretty much an easy thing to figure out. It's trying to figure out exactly where the highlights go and how bright is too bright and how bright is not bright enough so that's just that's just me i mean i i am always getting better and that's why i tell you guys you know get out there and practice and just play with it i mean i have been playing more and trying out different things that i either haven't tried before or have it's been a while i've been doing that a lot lately instead of just going back to my my regular. What I used to do all the time is it was always alcohol marker. And lately I've been trying so many new things that I haven't, <laughs> I'm getting out of practice with my markers. I thought today was probably a good day to do a markers. Okay, so that is colored in with that really light purplish color. So now I'm going to go back in with the HB2 and just out shadow just a touch because even this is a bit dark on the cat I'm gonna go more of it that that is this is basically the the, the mid-tone and then we've got the highlight so the mid-tone is I'm thinking is probably supposed to be than the rest so I'm gonna just try to bring in some of it not a ton and back in that 
light is shed. So I don't know what's going on volume. I will maybe it's my mic. I hit. The, I'm, I'm wearing a headset, so if I hit the mic, it shifted. Is it still going bad, guys? Eventually, I'll get the whole technology. I'm gonna apologize. You guys have been so patient with me over the last couple of months. Well, I'm even considering a lapel mic because that might work better. But Thank you, Elizabeth. I think that is it's turning out pretty cute, but again, it's just the, the blending part with the. I'm not quite sure. If you just heard something knocking, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm assuming it's my husband doing. Well, I think he's putting up some shelves. I need a little more of that darker. I'm almost, I'm very, very tempted to just color in more of this with this HB2, bring in, bring it further out. So I gotta go down. Go back in. It's the lightest color kind of just a that one and let's see how it Up just a touch. So that's gonna work. A little bit too much. So I think I need to just. Add. It is a bit damp. It's damp enough that it's actually warping the paper slightly. Sky. I think that's all that I'm gonna do on that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this down. We will get her on card base. Waiting whether or not I need any. Layer around. I've got a go ahead and to to cut off any of the sentiments. This one down. Did my um washi over here because I was seeing I saw a <clears throat> Amy R video where she had marked it with a sharpie, like with really fine fine sharpies so that she knew exactly where it was. And that's going to work out so much. Now that one is four by, <coughs> excuse me, four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to cut it down a little bit more side, two inches and three quarters. Quarters by That's gonna. Let me go ahead and get my 
scoreboard and embossing, sorry, and phone folder. Go ahead and score this. And just like I always do, this one top fold, which I don't do, score it at five and a half. Fold it with the score on the outside. Push it down. I am so sorry, guys. If, I'm so sorry if you're not able to hear me. I'm going to try unplugging and plugging back in. Can you hear me, Can you hear me better now? I'm going to pop him up on some fun tape. Actually, thinking uh, I did a, made a couple of, I cut a couple of pieces of cardstock so that they would be, make the top fold because I'm thinking about making or trying out making some easel cards. I haven't thought it all the way through on this one to basically figure out the stopper. So that's why this one's not going to be well, not going to be right now a top uh, an easel card. I may do that later. That haven't decided. But now that I um had unplugged and replugged in my mic, are you guys able to hear me better? Time consuming, well, most boring time consuming part of making art is getting rid of all that release paper. And just so that I can make sure that I see this where it needs to be, put it in the score. Still have one little piece in there. Oh, that is just darling. And of course, it's not completely finished yet. Let me get out a few little gems. I was thinking about just adding some little hearts to that, but I think that would make it too much, um, I don't know, too much Valentine-ish. And with it saying sending hugs and kisses, this could basically just be kind of a hello friend kind of card. But I think it does need a little bit extra. So I've got my art glitter glue and my big old bin of gems from this is super cheap i got this at hobby lobby probably with a 40 percent off coupon at the time uh, it's only 14 dollars, and this was like three years ago and it looks like i haven't touched it and i you know you guys know that i have been using this a lot It's there.
and I love these tiny ones, probably more I have no idea what I will use any of these. Little tr too much glue. That art glitter glue does dry clear, so that that is gonna. F and thank you guys for sticking with me this entire time. We've been on here for a little over an hour, I think, and I didn't even get a chance. So first off, I do want to, uh, again, thank you guys for coming by and hanging out with me. Thank you to everybody who was um, participated in those swaps with me this month. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of those cards and getting a little bit of extra here. Um, there is another swap going on over um, in, in my group, Crafting with Debbie, and I know that there's one over on snobs club and i'm doing both of those so just know that there is i'm right now i'm planning on having a swap every month and foiling and crafting with debbie and i know the foiling snobs club has one every month too so if you want to swap with me or any of the other crafters i mean you saw a bunch of cards from a and you go ahead and join one of the groups it'll be a lot of fun and thank you again for hanging out um i will talk to you guys later i do have a swap video coming up on Thursday so tune in for that one and I catch you later thank you so much bye guys have a great one